This is the new Mitsubishi I, or maybe it's the Mitsubishi I, I'm not quite sure. But what I can tell you is that its Pikachu styling has won it tons of awards in its native Japan, where they simply cannot build them quick enough. It's nearly 10 inches shorter than a Mini on the outside, but an utter TARDIS inside, supposedly able to accommodate four actual human adults in comfort. Let's find out. I went to the pub to recruit some real, actual human adults. Look, I know this is going to sound really seedy, but could you come out to the car park with me and sit in the car with me for a little while? Just for a quick experiment. And it's not rude or, uh, you know, yeah, suspicious. Cool. I'm not a kidnapper. Just for one minute. One techno. It's supposed to be able to fit four adults. Obviously, I'm one. I need three more, which is why you're here. Yeah, what do you guys spacious. like at the back there? It's all right, actually. It's lots of leg room, isn't it? Because I've got the seat yeah. set for me, and I'm, what, six foot three? I was going to say, yeah. Shoulder room, head room, what are you thinking? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah, it's great. Are you all yeah. right here? Yeah, very comfortable. You sure? Yeah. OK, well, thanks very much for that. You've helped my experiment. I think you're all free to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. The roomy feel comes in part from all the glazing. It's like sitting inside a giant astronaut's helmet. But you see, there's some very clever packaging going on inside this car. The engine doesn't take up any space in the front because it isn't there. It's here tucked underneath the boot, and interesting in itself, just 660cc, the same as a couple of uh, Coke cans. But it does have a turbocharger, and it kicks out a whopping 57 horsepower, which is enough to really embarrass sewing machines. With a top speed of 84 miles an hour, it's quicker to run down the motorway. The fact is, this is a car that should never leave the city limits. Think of it as a ball bearing to flick around pinball town centres. It's a really good ride, this car. There's potholes like that, and it soaks them up really well. It's smooth, it's comfortable, it's great if you've got piles, but I haven't. When you kick the automatic transmission down, you can really... It sounds like someone's going to the toilet really violently behind you. There's a list as long as your arm about why this car makes good sense. It's reasonably well equipped. It performs very well in crash tests. Drive it gently and you'll do more than 50 to the gallon around town. Plus, it spits out barely any CO2, so it's only costing about 35 quid a year to tax. But it costs 9,000 quid. And the fact remains is you can go out and buy a car such as the Toyota Igo, which is 2,000 pounds less, it's more economical, and it's faster. Which got me thinking, could I personally build a revolutionary concept in city cars on a budget? Hell yeah. And these are my ingredients. A smart, another smart, and four bolts. Total cost, £4,600. Roughly half the cost of an I, or I, or whatever it is. So how am I going to create a four-seater car but retain that dinky little wheelbase? Well, like a 1970s town planner, I'm thinking high rise. Unlike wealthy car manufacturers, my approach to engineering is a bit more garden shed. Think spanners and plenty of elbow grease. Behold, the world's first double-decker car. Oh, it's a lovely view up here, like a London sightseeing bus. And of course, it's got two boots, which means double the amount of cargo capacity compared to the eye. But is it as good as an eye? Well, let's conduct some very scientific tests. Test one, parking. This gap is too small, even for the eye. But will my double-decker smart squeeze in? Urban space saving, here we come. 
clearly not one for the multi-storey, but the double-decker's compact wheelbase gives it the edge for on-street parking. Now, how will it fare in our second test? Performance. With four on board each car, which will be the quickest in a straight line? Obviously, my double-decker smart's no good if you really need to get your mates somewhere in a hurry. But we have one final challenge. You see, it would be very irresponsible of me to put my brand new design straight into the market without first doing some research on stability. The elk test was developed in Sweden, where swerving to avoid moose is part of everyday driving. The eye avoids the obstacle and regains its composure nicely. Lord only knows how my double-decker will perform this 40 miles per hour emergency manoeuvre. Obviously, I completely trust my new prototype, which is why I'm going to wear a helmet, a neck brace and a tracksuit top. Why am I doing this? Wish me luck. Here we go. Here comes an elk. Incredibly, my creation took it all in its stride, sort of. So we thought we'd up the ante and go even faster. I suppose if he could loop the loop for his living, I guess donutting is a piece of cake. Ah!